Hey guys, so I bet you weren't expecting this, but Tesla essentially just nuked the Performance Model Y overnight and without any warning. So just like that, the Performance Model Y in Canada is now using an LFP battery and shipped directly from China. Now, LFP isn't so bad if Tesla didn't just purposely put it in all of their base model trims, and they did it for a lot of clear reasons, and the fact that they were in those base models didn't really matter that much because a lot of their consumers were not enthusiasts, but the fact that right now they're putting it inside a performance model vehicle means that they are essentially going to ship this across the entire world. So at this very point, if you guys live anywhere outside of Canada and you really want to get into your performance model Y or model 3, I'd say do it right now because you guys are given the chance to have the nickel battery pack that does perform a lot better than the LFP packs. Now I'll explain in a little bit here why the LFP battery is still a very subpar product in comparison to the nickel and if you've been given a chance to buy the nickel battery pack vehicles do it right now if you guys are into the performance models now like I said this is slowly gonna trickle its way down to the US and then over to China and Europe so if you don't go ahead and jump on in right now you're gonna have a car with a lot of negatives matter of fact they're already testing vehicles from China down in San Francisco specifically the model Y's and model 3 if you guys haven't already seen the videos on those go check it out I'll drop a link right down in the description below and right up top there and they're not even trying to hide it at all and the fact that they're testing these China made vehicles in California means that they are likely going to bring those vehicles over here for consumers so now let's get into the recent changes that has been happening in the past month there has been so much going on with the long range model finally coming back but it wasn't the project Highland vehicles right now if you pick up a long range version of the Model 3 down in the States, you're going to have 325 miles and even less than that if you do decide to opt for the 19 inch wheels. Now in comparison to the performance model which does qualify for the full tax incentive whereas the long range only qualifies for half just because it's made in China, the performance actually gets more range than the long range which ruins the idea of calling it a long range overall. So I don't know what Tesla's trying to do here, are they trying to slowly get rid of the long range vehicle or are they trying trying to make the performance look a lot better. And it's not even limited to the US. Up here in Canada, the Model Y rear wheel drive has finally come back, but it does have reduced range overall. And as you guys can probably already tell, the rear wheel drive Model Y here does have the LFP pack and shipped directly from China as well. Now, fortunately enough, Canada doesn't really care where the battery material or the vehicle was made or where it shipped from. They will give you the federal incentive regardless so it's a really good time to pick up a rear wheel drive but the thing is in the end it's still a base trim model the difference here is that this is the first performance model to ever get the LFP pack. Now I know a lot of you guys out there who just picked up a vehicle with LFP trying to defend it but let's try to be unbiased here. If LFP was so good why haven't they been advertising all the benefits of it and why haven't they been advertising it on vehicles like the Model S and Model X. LFP is generally a more subpar product for the lower trim vehicles. This is why it has always been in the base model rear wheel drive version of the Model 3 now coming to the Model Y rear wheel drive as well. The fact that it even made its way to the long range was already a disappointment in some way, but going to the performance version, which is full on acceleration and speed, that is a really big downgrade. Now, I'm not gonna go too in depth about why LFP is subpar compared to nickel, but the first few things here that comes to mind is the fact that it's a lot heavier. The second thing is that it is not energy dense, so that means that you're gonna have less room for energy within the same amount of space. The third thing is that it cannot output the same amount of energy. This is why it's not in the performance models. And then the fourth thing here is that it's horrible in cold weather. So four of those things combined don't really work well for any performance models out there regardless of if you can charge it 100% daily or not. Doesn't really matter to me. Now I typically like to buy the best of the best when I buy anything and that means the AMG world, the M, the RS, and in Tesla's world this is the performance 
performance models. Now, keeping that in mind, do you really want to buy a performance model of any car and have it perform worse than the other cars? Not really. Now, luckily enough, in the case of the performance model Y up here in Canada, the performance still practically stayed the same. The only dip here is the range. The original performance model had 489 kilometers approximately. That is 303 miles. And the new one here with the LFP pack now has 459. That's roughly about 285 miles. So that is roughly 10 to 15% dip right there in terms of range. So I don't really like that. I don't really like the fact that newer cars are going to have less performance and less range than the older cars. In 2023, I expect newer cars have better range, better performance, better cooling, better everything. But in the case here, think back of the Model 3 a few years back. It actually has a lot more features and a lot more range and everything compared to 23 and 3 models. Oh yeah, and this is my own experience here. But if you guys were thinking that the standard range in 2021 versus the 2022 model has no difference in terms of 0 to 60s, trust me, it really does. If you guys sat in an older Model 3 versus a new Model 3, the difference is quite substantial when you do punch it. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you do think of the performance, the long range, or any other models that come out and Tesla puts an LFP in. Anyways, I know this is the video you guys probably weren't expecting, but this is just, just what I'm seeing. And luckily enough, I'm not in the market for a Model Y performance. I'm more of the sedan type of guy. So the Model 3 performance, hopefully this sticks with the nickel battery chemistry because if it switches over to LFP, I am completely unsold on the idea of buying any of the performance models. Now just fingers crossed here that it doesn't switch over anytime soon and I can pick up the Project Highland Model 3 in time before they make the switch over. But yeah, sorry for the rant guys. I do think this is the way that Tesla is probably going to be moving forward in the future with. So if you do have the chance to pick one up right now that's a nickel pack, I'd recommend going out and doing so. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and if you guys are picking up a Model Y performance, what country you're in and if you're in Canada, how was this affecting your purchase decision? Anyways, this should wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. I will be pushing out a lot more videos as a lot more things have been going on in the past couple weeks. So yeah, this is it. Once again, peace out.